Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome back to Let's Play Sly 2 Band of Thieves for the Sony PlayStation 2. We got this mission started in the last episode, and we also decided to utilize the power of a couple of ghosts. And it's a good thing we did, because that's just going to escalate the war that is going on between Nayla and the Contessa here. So... Now that we got that stuff over with, it's now time to go for another treasure. And I believe I know just where to find it, too. Obviously, I'm going to need to look into the castle area itself in order to get the treasure that I am looking for. I may find the other one along the way, the one that I didn't hunt down. But I probably should be able to find it nonetheless. Alright. I do believe we kind of need to be on this side of the whole area. The whole castle area. If we want to find this thing. Maybe. Maybe. I know I'm going to have to look over there at the very least. And that's not exactly going to be it. I don't think. But this is a good place to look. And I'll know if I found it because I kind of have an idea of where it is. Okay. I know exactly where it is. It's over here now. Now remember. Okay. We need to start getting rid of some enemies. Before we tackle this. I definitely want to get rid of this guy. And of course take his treasure too. That way I can get him out of the way. Now. Here it is. Grab the thing. And we want to get up to the top as soon as we can. Smack you out of the way, first of all. And then we need to utilize our map. Okay. It's over there. Time to start running. Time to start avoiding the searchlights. That would help, too. And we need to avoid being blasted out of the sky, too. Thankfully, if we can get over up to here in time... Yes. Okay. That is done. Now that we got that out of the way... We can sell all this stuff. We're at 9,000 now. That's really good. And I'm going to buy the health extractor for Bentley. It's a good thing we're doing that, because... I want to utilize him first out of the two missions that we have left. At least for this part of Episode 5. I might as well go ahead and show the health extractor off. I'm going to set this to R1. I'm going to use this to replace the size of the stabilizer. This is a lot better t tool to use overall. Capture guards and extract medicine from them. Press the assign button to aim, the assign button again to throw, and then a third time to trigger. So, how this works basically is, if I can somehow get away from the tanks, where are you going to go? Oh, that's perfect. We're going to throw this over here with the assign button. Press it a third time. Boom. Boom. This thing turns the enemy you captured into health. Really, really good. It also helps get rid of enemies from a distance whenever you need to. And you make your life a little easier at the same time. Because if you're hurting for health, you can get it a lot more easily. 
and oh boy, I like this this thing. It is well if I can actually get it to capture something, that'd be great. If it if you can get it to work for you, it is unbelievably broken. You can get a lot of good health from a lot of enemies this way. Of course, all health is good, but, you know. You can definitely hold your own as Bentley. For best results... Use the sleep darts. In conjunction with the health extractor. That way, you can ensure that enemies are out of your way, which is nice. All right. We might as well start attacking enemies. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and get rid of this guy anyway. And, of course, get some health on top of that, which is really nice. Now we can go down here. This mission is going to take a while, hence why I'm doing it first. That's it. I knew she'd have a bad mojo collector to transport the overflow. Huh? It's a semi-magical device that sucks up bad mojo. I'll need it to gather the runoff from these spouts. Wow. Sounds easy. Not really. Bad mojo is a powerfully dark force. Take any damage while carrying that collector and you're done for. Wow. Sounds hard. Yes, it presents an interesting tactical challenge. Perhaps I could use the death traps native to these crypts against any foe that might attempt to thwart my collection of the ectoplasm. Precisely. Once all four cylinders of the collection device are full, that should be enough black magic to destroy the mind shuffler. Murray clearly does not have any grasp of the English language whatsoever. So we need to use circle to grab the mind shuffler, and then we need to use circle at the switches in order to trigger them. So that way we can crush enemies if and when we need to. If a switch is green, you can use it. If not, you'll have to wait for it to turn green before you can use it again. If you can get two enemies on the octagon where the crusher is, good for you. That makes things a little easier to deal with. And you won't have to wait as long for the traps to reset. Matter of fact, in case something goes awry, you'll have more than one trap to work with. This part is easy. The other parts, not so much. Looks like the spouts run out of bad mojo. No matter, I'm one fourth of the way to a full tank. And we'll have the use of Minakicom to find that waypoint. As always. Did not want to be spotted. Anyway. We need to find a way up there. 
Not quite sure how, but I will find it eventually. We'll have to enter that door eventually, but now is not the time. And there should be a guy somewhere on here. Maybe. Nope, there isn't. He didn't show up that time. But, I do, there it is. Not to say, I do need to go up here so I can find the waypoint a little better. And it's apparently right here. Oh, I didn't even need to speak. This one's a little hard. Right covers that skith. The blade trap is that middle one. And this crushes anybody who gets a little too close. That left one is the knife trap for anybody who's about to get close to you. And all the way in the back is the crusher trap if you need it. Hopefully you shouldn't need it. Once you know what you're doing, getting in a pattern with these traps will be easy to do. And even if an enemy gets super close, you'll still be able to take out just about everybody else. And you'll definitely have a pattern going on. For best results, you don't want to run while doing this one because if you do, you're accidentally going to miss the switch that you want to hit. And you will mess stuff up and you'll have to back up a bit to use the other traps or use the trap that's back there rather. And you're going to make things a little more miserable for yourself. So you definitely need to be careful. Also, it may look like there's an infinite amount of enemies here, but trust me, they do run out eventually. As seemingly endless as they are. And don't forget to keep an eye on that gauge in the center there, or the lower right, actually. This one definitely takes a long time to fill up. But this one can be done. There should be a new waypoint in your binoculars. <laughs> and I got him. Just like that. Okay. Need to look around for that next waypoint, and it's. It's all the way back there. I think that's the one that I said we'd have to go back to eventually. Anyway. Need to start looking around a little bit. And it is around here. I think. Oh, it's right down here. It's this one then near the gravestones. Alrighty then. This one it starts getting tougher. You have a flamethrower at all the way over here. You have crushers at the sides. And you have gas straps to use in case you get surrounded super easily. These traps take a long time to regenerate. So you want to make sure you use them as effectively as you can. Otherwise you are in for a bad time. The most interesting one 
is the gas trap. It doesn't kill everybody immediately, but you can lay bombs with the Tronga button and take out virtually anybody that gets in your way. And I don't know why I used the super fast run technique, but I did, and it kind of almost backfired on me, maybe, I think. How did you avoid that? That frightens and confuses me. Do you want to start laying traps, though? And I got rid of a whole ton of you at once. And you're the last guy! We need to go back to the well, because that is the last one. Apparently that door I passed a little earlier wasn't where I needed to go. Oh well. Uh, but we need to run to this door rather quickly, because those guys will follow us down the well. This is going to be the hardest of all. But I may remind you of Slide 3 if you played it. Left, middle, right. These things refill or respawn or become useful again rather quickly if you need them. And if you can get in the groove, you can definitely get rid of these guys in record time. You do want to hold the run button for this one. Otherwise, you're probably not going to reach the switches in time. You do have that bridge going in and out behind the switches. If you're lucky, it will stop the enemies from coming towards you. In case they do manage to make it to your side. Oh dear. And yeah, if you get hit just once, you will have to do this all over again. This one can be very easy to mess up. These front three switches, you can get them to go from red to green rather quickly after you've activated them. But that back switch, you're going to have to wait quite a while before you can use it again. Now that back switch, it actually shocks everybody in the room, not just everyone who's on your side. So, use it wisely in case you get swarmed, or if you think you're going to be swarmed. Also... You want to trigger the traps just before these guys hit the ground. It does make this a little easier. You can give yourself a little more time with some of them. Really? Ugh. Didn't think that guy would reach me at all. Honestly. Man, this one is a little harder than I thought. I'm about to say, I'm making this look a little easier than it actually is, but, well, that was only true for the first three. 
not as true with this fourth and last one that we have to do. You want to make sure these guys leap into the flames. You can have you can tri you can trip these these traps while these guys are leaping into position, and you can still hit them. Also, these guys are dropping a ton of health for me, and I don't even need it. Oh dear. Well, you were the last two anyway. And we should definitely be getting out of here. And we should definitely be heading back to the safe house now. Let's see here. N okay. Okay, I see where I am now. Let us get back over to the boat. This would work a little better if we were on top of the boat rather than at the front because, well, we're going to be shoveled to the side if we're at the front of the boat. So let's not be at the front of the boat. Now we just need to make our way back over to here, which is going to be a pain in the butt because of all these tanks, and I don't want to be in front of a single one of them. There should be um, stairs here. There they are. Where do they're all back there? So now that that's over, we can go ahead and save the game real quick. Almost 50% of the way there. I am surprised. It was only one mission and one of the pieces of treasure. But at least we got that one mission done because I knew it was going to take quite a while to do. Join me next time where we take on the last mission of this part of episode 5 and then get ready to do even more missions. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!